Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. let's check out how we can make the simplest form of fluid simulation in Unity. Now this is a very complex topic and making 100% realistic fluids is pretty much bleeding edge research, so what we're going to build here is the simplest, most straightforward implementation possible. So let's first think of what do we mean when we think of a fluid. Essentially it's meant to be formless, shapeless, like water. So as you put water into a cup, it becomes a cup. As you put water into a bottle, it becomes a bottle. And if you put it in a teapot, it becomes a teapot. At the same time, it also has physics. So water doesn't go through walls. And as you know, water by itself is not a single solid thing, but instead it is made up of billions or trillions of individual molecules. So this is how we're going to simulate it. We're just going to make tons of tiny physics particles and let the physics engine do its thing. So here I am in my scene. I just have a bunch of interesting shapes. And let's begin by making our first singular water molecule. So we just create an empty game object. Let's name this just the liquid particle. Then over here, let's reset the transform. And for the visual, let's add a sprite render. And for the sprite, I'm going to use this simple circle. So there it is, just push it up there. Yep, there you go, just a tiny circle. Now let's send it in blue just to pretend like it's water, okay? Next up, we're going to use physics. So let's add a circle collider. So this is the shape of our particle. And the default, yep, it already matches the sprite perfectly. And finally, we add a rigid body, in this case, a rigid body 2D. So just with this, we should have one physically accurate particle. So if I press play, it should fall down and roll down here. Let's see. And yep, there's the tiny particle. It falls down and rolls down. So here we have a physically accurate particle. All right, so far so good. However, in my case, it's falling a bit too slowly. I would prefer if it was a bit faster. So for that, we can play around over here with the rigid body properties. Specifically, you can play around with the mass and over here, the gravity scale. Now, obviously the scale that you use here will depend on the unity scale of the game that you're using. In my case, if I leave the mass at one and put gravity scale at three, it looks pretty good. So yep, now it falls a bit faster, which I think it looks better. Now, another thing we can add is a physics material. So we can simply right click, go into create, and in here, create a physics material 2D. Let's name this no friction. And here you see the two properties for the physics material, and we can just set friction down to zero. So this will make it so that the particle easily slides along. So just select the particle and over here on the rigid body, just drag that physics material. And also here on the angular drag, set it to zero so it has absolutely no drag anywhere. So there it is, now our particle is nicely slippery, just like water. On the other hand, if you wanted to make some slimy goo, you would perhaps increase the friction. So it all depends on what liquid you're trying to simulate. Learn all about VR and AR with the Patreon sponsor, XR Bootcamp. It's a six to eight week bootcamp taught by industry professionals. Learn how to interact in VR, optimize your rendering and learn about dots. Check them out at xrbootcamp.com and use the coupon CM10 to get 10% off any of the master classes. Okay, so far so good. Now, like I said, this is just a single particle. So before we make a bunch, let's turn into a prefab. So just drag it right here into our folder. Yep, now it's a prefab. And now just duplicate it tons of times. All right, so there it is. I just duplicated and made tons of prefabs. And if we run, and yep, there they are, they all fall down. All right, awesome. So physically, we have our scene working exactly as intended. But visually, this definitely does not look like water. It looks like a bunch of different separate circles that are clearly separate from one another. So even if I move it in order to make it fall down, yep, they fall down, but again, they are just particles. They do not look like a liquid. So let's solve that. And the way we're going to do that is with a bit of visual trickery. What we want to do is essentially merge the various particles when they are near one another. So we want to fill in all of these tiny gaps. And one way that we can do that is pretty much to just blur the particles so they look like they're merged together. And one way to do that is by rendering the particles into a separate texture. So over here in my scene, I've got my main camera. There you go, just a basic to the camera. And now I'm going to duplicate this. Let's name this one the fluid camera. And on this one, the tricky thing we're going to do is we're only going to render just the particles. So we can do that by playing around with the layers. So let's select our prefab. We're going to go into the layers and we're going to add a new layer. And in here, let's add a layer and name it fluids. Then on the prefab, let's make sure we set it into that layer. And now we select, first of all, the original main camera. And in here we go into the culling mask 
and we make sure that this one renders everything except the fluids. So if we look over here on the camera preview, we do not see our prefabs. And then we go into the fluid camera. And on this one, we only want to render the fluids. So let's select first nothing and then just the fluids. Okay, so far so good. Now we don't want to render this camera to our screen, but instead we want to render it into a texture. So let's go here, create, and we're going to create a new render texture. Here it is. Let's name this the fluid render texture. And now up here on the size of the render texture, we can pretty much automatically blur the particles. So just use a small size and 256 by 256 sounds pretty good. And just with that, it will automatically have some blurriness. So we've got this tiny texture in here and just select our fluid camera. And on the output, instead of outputting to the screen, let's output into this texture. And as soon as we do, and if we inspect the texture, yep, that's what it looks like. So now we want to see this one in game. So for that, let's create a new object. Let's select a 3D object and select a flat quad. Now on this quad, let's first scale it up by a bit. And in here, we want to render our render texture. So let's make a material to render it. Let's go up here, simply create a brand new material, make it for the fluid. And on the quad, we're going to display that fluid material. Let's also get rid of the mesh collider. And in here for the texture itself, let's drag our render texture. And there you go. Now this quad is showing what the second camera sees. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. It really helps out the channel. So now we just need to make these match up. So for that, we can just actually take the quad and go all the way up there. And in here, we make it a child of the fluid camera. Then put it on X and Y of zero. And yep, now it's positioned exactly. And now in order to make sure that the size is correct, we need to go and see how our camera is set up. And over here, you can see that it's an orthographic camera with a size of 50. Now the 50 orthographic size is essentially half of the total vertical size. So it means there's 50 units from here down to the center and 50 more from here down to here. So the total from top to bottom is 100. So that's why we go into the quad and in here set the Y into 100. And let's put the X also at 100. So if you don't like this enable and disable, yep, it is perfectly positioned. And as you can see, because of the low resolution of the texture, it already has quite a bit of blurriness. Okay, so far so good. However, this texture is meant to only show the particles and leave the rest of it transparent. Right now we can actually see a background as well as some post-processing effects, so you can see some vignette in there. We don't want that, so let's select this camera. And first of all, to get rid of the post-processing, just up here, untick it. Yep, there you go. And now we have our solid color. Let's make sure that the background type is set to solid color and for the background color select black and then zero on the alpha. So with this it is correct, however here it does not look correct. That is because the material also needs to be transparent. So let's select our fluid material and instead of making it opaque just make it transparent and yep there you go, now it does work exactly as intended. And just one final thing which is make sure that the quad is in front of the camera. So right now, if I go into the game view, I can't see it. That's because the quad is on a Z of minus 159. So it's way behind the camera. In my case, my fluid camera is on a Z of minus 10. So for the quad itself, let's put it on plus 10. And yep, there you go. Now it does show up. Okay, so we can now run this and see how it looks like. And yep, it does indeed look correct. So we have all of our particles. They are being rendered onto a blurry texture. And then that texture is being overlaid on top. So we have a main camera rendering the rest of the scene and then a second camera rendering just the particles. However, like this, as you can see, it obviously still doesn't look exactly very good. So it still looks like individual particles. Now we want the shape as a whole to be blurry, but the visual is meant to be clear. So for that, we're going to make a simple custom shader. Let's simply right click and we're going to create. We're going to create a new shader and let's make a new unlit graph. Let's name it our fluid shader and just double click to open it. Okay, so here we have our shader open up in Shader Graph. Now I've covered a quick getting started guide to Shader Graph, so go watch that if you're not familiar with this tool. Essentially, it lets us very easily make some awesome shaders. And one that we're going to make here is extremely simple. The first thing we need is obviously a texture, so let's add a new texture 2D. Let's name it our main text, which is the standard name. So for the reference underscore main text. Okay, then for the default, we can actually select it. So I've selected the fluid render texture and now we just simply grab the texture on here. Then we need to sample it. So sample our texture 2D. And just like this, we can see what the camera sees. Now the trick for making our effect work is going to be using the step node. I've already used this node previously when making the grass wind shader. This is very useful. What it does is it only grabs values above a certain threshold and ignores the rest. 
So we take something with smooth values and clamp them to either one or zero. So over here we have an edge and an input, and on the input let's drag the alpha channel from our simple texture. Yep, there it is. So we have white where there is something and black where it's transparent. And now up here if we modify the edge you can see roughly what happens in there. So the lower that I lower this, you can see that it becomes more white. So this is essentially taking the blurry parts and either make them solid or completely transparent. So the end result is that we take away the blurriness of the render texture and make a solid shape out of it. So instead of modifying a value in here, let's make a simple vector 1, let's name it the thickness, and let's default it 2.3. So just drag it in there and connect it onto that one. Okay, so we have this, and we can send this directly over to the alpha channel. And here on the preview, let's right click, select the quad, and then we are going to need the colors. So for the color, let's define another property for our color, just name it our color. Let's default it to a watery blue, okay? And by the way, let's also make it HDR just to have a bit more fun, all right? And we're going to add a multiply node, and we simply multiply this one by our color. Okay, so we have this, and here we have our color output, and just go in there. All right, so there we can see the preview. We just have an issue with transparency, so on the master node, just click on the gear icon, and in here on surface, instead of opaque, make it into transparent, and on blend, make sure you set the alpha. And here we have our texture. So if we go back, and on the fluid material, we just go into shader graphs and use our shader. And yep, there it is. Now the gaps do get a bit more closed off. And we can play around over here with the thickness, so as we increase we get more gaps, and if I put this at like 0.1, then it starts to become like a solid shape. Now we can improve this a bit further. So let's go into each individual particle. And by the way, here's a quick Unity tip. So right away I can see the particles because the quad is on top. Over here on the hierarchy on the left side we've got this button, which essentially says we cannot touch this. So now if I click, it goes through the quad. And there's another one just to hide it, so that way I can easily see the particles. Alright, now on the particle, let's modify it a bit. Let's actually open the prefab to see it easily. So instead of using a perfect circle, let's swap this for a faded circle. So here I have one just like this, so there you go. And now for the visual, let's make it a bit bigger, so 1.5 on each side. And for the circle letter size, let's make it a bit smaller, so something like 0.3. So this way now the circle itself has a bit of fadedness which again, that's what's going to help in order to merge the whole visual into one thing. And just with this, if we now try, and yep, there it is. Now it does indeed look like water. So it no longer looks like a ton of individual particles. Now it does look like a solid shape. And if we try to see them in action, yep, there you go, they fall down, and yep, now it does start to look like a liquid. And now here I have swapped out for a bit of a more complex shader. So the logic is all still the same, and yep, now it does start to look a lot more like water. So it does have a bit of foam on top, so it looks quite nice. So here is how the shader works, and it's a bit more complex, but it's really just following the exact same logic as previously. Up here I just add a bunch of noise in order to make the water feel like something moving. So that's just the visual, and the same thing that we had previously is what we have here. So we grab the texture, we sample it, then we do a step node, and multiply another color and so on. And the only difference is over here for the foam. So we just sample the texture, but instead of sampling on the exact same position, we just add a tiny offset. So that means that the sample texture is a bit higher, then we just do a subtract node, and essentially that gives us the very edge on the top. Then just take that, do a step node, multiply by a certain foam color, and yep, everything looks like that. So here is the final effect, and it does look pretty good. You can download and inspect the final shader in the downloadable project files, but essentially it works exactly like the outline shader that I covered previously, so just shifting the texture and doing a subtraction, and here it is looking awesome. So it's got some noise to make it seem like there's actual water rather than just a solid object, and we've got a nice foam, and everything still behaves exactly as you would expect. Now, like I said, this is the simplest way to do fluid simulation. As you can tell, the big issue with this is with regards to either accuracy or performance. So the more particles that you use, and the smaller that you make them, the more accurate the simulation becomes. But remember that these are all physics objects, so the more you have, the more it drags on performance. So the system works great, but do keep that in mind and don't go too crazy with extremely tiny particles. And now we can just play around with the color in order to get some different liquids. So if we tint it in red, we now have some lava. If we tint it in green, then we have some slimy goo or acid. And yep, there it is, some very awesome simple fluid simulations. We can use this exact same system to make a gas as opposed to a liquid. The only thing you really need to do is just go up here onto the gravity scale, instead of putting a positive value, just put a negative value. And yep, there it is, and now instead of a liquid, you have a gas that floats upwards. 
And again, you can pretend that this is a different thing depending on the colors. So if you make it in purple, it looks like some toxic gas. If you put it in black, then it looks like some pollution. And if you put it in white, then it looks like some sort of steam. So here is the final result. We've got both liquids and gas, and it all looks awesome. So this is an excellent system to use whenever you need some very simple fluids. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where I will be using this to make a nice puzzle game. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unticodemonkey.com. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.